death is not something to be afraid of, and cemeteries aren't scary places. They're beautiful places. Well, cemeteries are important to me because I feel like the history of Montana's communities are buried in our cemeteries. If we preserve our cemeteries well, that means they're going to be available for generations and generations to come, to observe, to know, to learn, to enjoy. Cemeteries tell our stories for sure. Oftentimes without cemeteries, we don't have a community picture. And you can visit these small cemeteries especially, and you can look at the people buried there, and those are the founders, those are the people who were the cornerstones of our communities, of our state of the territory, and I think uh, it's very important to collect that information. It's important to preserve it, and you know, so that we can better teach our future generations. There are more than 680 cemeteries in Montana. Some of these cemeteries date back to the late 1800s and are the final resting spot for the pioneers of our state. I think in Montana, there are probably more unmarked burials than there are marked burials. But what that means is often when we go into a cemetery, we don't know if a whole section is in use or has been previously in use, and that makes it very difficult to know where to put contemporary burials. I think in Montana, there are a lot of needy cemeteries because this was a place where people came and they may or may not have intended to stay, but because of drought and depressions, oftentimes whole families came and then left. Montana cemeteries provide a lasting reminder of earlier generations, but are often in a state of neglect and disrepair. However, there are several innovative technologies available to help locate, map, protect, and preserve these sacred spaces. It's really important to get this information and this data out to the public, and that's what technology can really do for us. When taking on a cemetery preservation project, the first step is observation. Look at the cemetery and observe what is taking place. Analyze and research the situation and try to understand why these problems are there. Then, determine a solution and map out a plan. Understanding what you've got in front of you is the very first step, and then building on those steps is really important. Today, there are several technologies available to help with cemetery preservation projects. Depending on the condition of the cemetery, the key is to knowing which technology to employ. After the observation step, the next step is research and mapping. Using GPS and GIS to observe and map is a great first step when working in an area with known and marked burials. Oftentimes there are maps of cemeteries, but more often than not in historic cemeteries, the maps have been lost or caught in a fire or just have, been, have gone away over the course of the years. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to help people remap some of their cemeteries and formulate new plat maps of where everyone is buried so that in active cemeteries that doesn't become an issue if you are reburying people in places where there are already burials. And also just to have a sense of who is in the cemetery. Crystal and her partner John Olson use GPS to accurately pinpoint where people are buried so they can create detailed cemetery maps have a high-powered GPS unit, a little bit more high power than what you have in your phone. So with a high-powered GPS system, you can very accurately pinpoint a location. Once they have inputted all the information into the GPS, they then make interactive GIS maps. With the GIS map, you can really see some patterns emerge. You can see some very useful information. That way you're kind of taking that data, that information, and you're putting it into something that is usable and user-friendly so that people can better understand and see the visual of where everyone is buried. Another challenge in cemetery preservation is determining whether there are indeed unmarked graves and where those burials are located. 
K9 forensics can assist in locating unmarked graves. Well, suppose you have an area where you're concerned there might be a uh, burial, it could be historic, it could be prehistoric. The, the dogs can survey a fairly large area relatively quickly compared to a lot of other uh, geophysical techniques used in archaeology and can say, okay, over in this particular area I have human remains sent. The dogs will be walking back and forth over an area. If they detect human remains sent, you'll usually see a change in their behavior where they get more interested in the spot, sniffing around, and eventually once they say, okay, there's enough scent here for me to say this is the right source, they will do a sit alert. Once the dogs give their handlers the signal, they place a colored flag on that spot. After the dogs have finished working in an area, the pattern of these flags can be documented using GIS and GPS to create new maps of possible burial locations. We know from the science side that the human decomposition generates a roughly 400 different chemicals. Animals generate a lot of these same chemicals, but dogs are very good at smelling combinations of scents and they can put together a combination that says this is human. Ground penetrating radar, or GPR, is a geophysical method that uses an electromagnetic pulse to capture images and detect things in the subsurface of the ground. Like the K9 forensic technology, GPR can help identify and locate the exact locations of unmarked burials. Through the, the data that I process on the computer, I can, based on the, the readings I get, I can determine the size, shape, depth, and based on those and contextual clues with how burials are normally um, created. Going off of those kind of dimensions, you can start to hone in on whether this is actually a burial or whether this is a large rock or whether this is something else. The brightness of the reflections in the data can also tell you different things, whether or not it's a concrete vault, whether it's a metal casket, whether it's a wooden casket. Um, you can also tell if the casket is intact, whether it's a nice clean reflection, or you have a bunch of different reflections that are all um, jumbled up showing that the casket has kind of dilapidated. If you don't have a casket reflection, um, a lot of times you can tell based on the natural stratigraphy that you see in your data, you can see interruptions where you can tell whether or not there's a grave shaft there. So you can see disturbed soil and that can maybe key you in on a potential burial. Ethan uses a 400 megahertz antenna that is attached to a cart and a control unit. The antenna can detect reflected signals up to eight to 10 feet in the subsurface. Ground penetrating radar is important for cemetery preservation um, just so we know where everybody is. Uh, a lot of times records get lost, mishandled, um, are kept incorrectly. So the importance of ground penetrating radar can map those areas where people have been interred so there's no accidental exhumations of previously buried people. One quickly advancing technology used in preserving and mapping historic cemeteries are drones. I do a lot of mapping, uh, creating orthomosaics from pictures. Uh, so I'll, I'll fly a pattern in an area of concern. The software takes all those pictures and then meshes them together, stitches them together, which results in a very high quality, high resolution uh, map. Can create a digital elevation map from those pictures as well because it uses photogrammetry to create depth, so you can create an actual 3D map of what I'm taking as well. One of the things, especially if it's a cemetery that's been kind of abandoned, that's really where this was going to shine. Cemeteries are surrounded by a wide variety of beautiful plant life. But if we take a closer look at the vegetation in and around cemeteries, we can learn a lot about the people who are buried there and possibly help find unmarked burials. Vegetation is not necessarily something that obscures uh, our work, but can actually tip us off to uh, the presence of a site. While cemetery plantings can sometimes obscure historical burials, in some instances, they are the marker. Examining cemetery botany can provide additional clues to documenting burial locations. Vegetation is not just a marker of the presence of the deceased. It's also important for the living 
cemetery plantings are part of the healing process. And so cemeteries are not just imagined spaces of this otherworldly place, but the act of making them is transformative in the survivors. And this is something that's seen beyond just cemeteries. While monument preservation isn't a new technology, it is still a key resource used when preserving historic cemeteries. Most our foundation is given away and they're not level, so they'll be require a new foundation or they'll require cleaning. Caring for historic monuments is best done using a non-hazardous biodegradable solution, which can be poured or sprayed on, then gently scrubbed with a nylon brush and then rinsed. Mold, moss, and lichen can be safely and easily removed using this low-tech yet effective technology. D2 is an example of a commonly available biodegradable compound. Damaged headstones found in historic cemeteries can be due to accidents or vandalism. Weather and wildlife can also disrupt and displace monuments, though the majority of damaged headstones can be repaired. We would rather not replace the, the older stones that have had some problems with a new one if we don't have to. We can put them back together usually. If, if they're broken in half, if there's a piece broken off, many times we can epoxy them back together, put some pins in them so they'll stay in place, and get them looking reasonably good after they've been damaged. Unfortunately, many headstones found in historic cemeteries are completely unreadable therefore making it difficult to map or preserve. Reflectance Transformation Imaging, or RTI, is a technology that uses digital cameras and a controlled array of light to capture the surface shapes and colors of monuments. RTI is uh, used to try to extract information that is faded from tombstones. The names and the dates on many, uh, on many of these markers has become eroded. It's very difficult to see. And so by obtaining a series of images from different lighting connections, we can cast shadows across uh, that in the lab. And hopefully by casting those shadows, you can then read the information and extract what was originally there. Photogrammetry takes measurements from multiple photographs and through a computer software program, it can then sew the images together and make a three-dimensional model. Photogrammetry can be used to model these tombstones. And again, from that model, there are a couple possibilities. Firstly, what you're doing is you're documenting the current condition of, of the object, of the subject. Secondly, that can be disseminated to other people. One option is when the model is complete, you can output a three-dimensional PDF file which can be shared pretty universally. And then people can navigate that, that 3D file in their computer to look at this from different angles. And then instead of just seeing photos of it, they could get more of a spatial reference by navigating it. Cemeteries where these are probably more useful would be the more historic cemeteries where, again, inscriptions are fading, tombstones are being damaged, you know, to try and retain the information that we have there, and then to pass that information into, you know, into the next generation. Forensic archeology span is called upon when remains are accidentally discovered. Identifying who, when, and why the burials are there can be determined by forensic archeologists and assist in documenting historic burials. Forensic archeology span can help with anything from discovery of a, of a burial um, during construction projects, which again happens often, um, as well as a relocation of cemeteries. If they go defunct, you know, lose funding, um, or it's a family cemetery that needs to be moved for some reason, we can do that for you. We have um, lots of cemeteries here in Montana that people don't know about. And they come across, surprisingly, building a road or putting in a water pipe or something like that. And so what we do as forensic archaeologists and forensic anthropologists is we come in and the first thing is we can identify where burials are likely located. And then we focus heavily on complete recovery of the remains. And in that process, we're able to do things like identify the coffin type. 
we're able to identify artifacts with different burials. And then we can do some analyses in situ, so in the ground, before the burial comes up. Because a lot of times preservation, as soon as you take it out of the ground, it's gone. When working on a preservation project, it is important to remember to do no harm. Treat the site with respect and use the appropriate restoration techniques and technologies. These technologies and others can be used to document, restore, and preserve historic cemeteries. For additional resources and details on preserving cemeteries, please visit the Montana History Foundation website at www.mthistory.org. Preserving our cemeteries is key to remembering our history, people, and communities.